broadcasting from the Blanchestan Centre. This is Phoenix FM. The internet is a communications tool used the world over where people can come together to bitch about movies and share pornography with one another. According to the Nerd Index, you should be upside down in a junior high toilet around the clock. This is Sparta! <laughs> All your base are belong to us. The balls are inert. And now it begins. All right, guys, uh, you are listening to Phoenix 92.5 FM. If you're joining us on a Saturday, if you're joining us live, welcome to Twitch. Uh, Woo! <laughs> welcome. Yes. Uh, Nerducks over on Twitch is where you can reach us every single week, every Thursday. We aim to start at 9, but sometimes a little bit later, so thanks for sticking around. Um, there is a live chat, so you can pop on the live chat there if you want to. And uh, Keen, we have so much to get through this week. Holy cow. Yeah, as soon as um, Star Wars news dropped, I knew that nothing else would be... Ha- there'd be room for nothing else in this episode. Just, I think... I my Facebook feed and Instagram feed has been nothing but your thoughts and jokes for the past five days at least. Fair no, like the Mandalorian stuff and the Obi Wan Kenobi stuff was cool, and I was like, okay, great, mm. but I it wasn't something that kind of made me want to you know really get involved, bring it up on the show. Like obviously we would have talked about mm. it, but it wasn't something where I'm like, oh my god, we need to talk about it. As soon as the the D twenty three stuff with um with the uh, rise of skywalker dropped i was like oh god what is this <laughs> and i was just like oh why can't it be thursday already you know so <laughs> i will be honest with you though after last week's show and going on youtube and stuff really bummed me out like i was really really upset uh because of the spider-man stuff yeah like I, I know i was i made a prediction last week that didn't come true it could have happened i hoped it happened but obviously it seems like the we'll touch on that real quick. It's for anyone who doesn't know, so, uh, Sony took their Spider Man and went home, mm. and it looks like they're gonna pop him into their their Venom verse. Spider Man very far from home. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it looks like he's gonna be in the next Venom movie or the Venom movie after it, and yeah, mm. that's kind of the way it is. But uh, there's a really uh, anyone who watches Midnight Edge, if you don't do. Um, Midnight, Midnight, Midnight Edge are fantastic on YouTube and their breakdown of the whole situation is better than what we could do so do check that out but long story short Sony basically put Disney on the long figure for 6 months and then when the deal was up they're like no and they took him back so bummer really bummer and I was every time I saw a video on YouTube I was like oh this sucks just got the Oscar for best animation in picture yeah, that's it. Like, they, like, don't get me wrong. Ed, uh, Into the Spider Verse is great, but you know, it's it is what it is. Yeah, but. yeah, that's true. But it's great as an island. I wouldn't. I'm not sure if I'd consider it like a franchise or anything like that. Like the thing of it is, I don't understand why Sony did what they did. Like, obviously for money, right? But mm. like, they could make more money by just <laughs> leave. You know, by readjusting the deal. Where they're like, okay, listen. Uh, Tom Holland is the MCU Spider-Man but we want mm. to have our own Spider-Man or Spider-Men or whatever and then yeah. make their own movies so do a Spider-Gwen movie do a Miles Morales movie you know, they could just do them and then Sony, yeah. uh, Mar- Disney would be like okay cool but Tom Holland is our Spider-Man and then that would have made more sense than oh no we want him it's just it's silly you know and it, you know it could work out the next movies could be great but I don't know. I have a, I have a bad feeling about the entire phase four of the MCU. I think I think we've hit peak superhero stuff now, and mm. you know I can see a decline coming. To be fair, though, Marvel seemed to be kind of aware of this too, because looking at the next phase, they're all mostly new properties. Mm. So I think I think they seem to be savvy enough to know. Okay, we're not going to follow up Endgame with. Captain Marvel 2 and Doctor Strange 2 straight out of the gate. They're going to throw in a few wild cards. Yeah. 
and see what sticks to the wall first, which isn't the safe bet. And to me, at least, I'd rather they fall on their face for a creative risk than for playing it safe, you know? Yeah, and it's just, it's like, the say what you want about, um, and we have about um, Ragnarok, at least it was a risk, you know, and it took, it was a kind of a bit different direction. Same with Guardians of the Galaxy, but it's just uh, in order to have to make this go long term, it needs to be like a, you know, be many different things while still being a comic. Book. Like it needs to transcend the idea of what a comic book movie is. So that's why I think Doctor Strange Two is going to be great because apparently it's a horror movie. Um, oh yes! So that's going to be super fun, and it's like cool if we're able to do that. Well then. It's much better than seeing... Because, look, I have no appetite for a new Avengers movie. Like, not no. yet. Like, who are they going to wheel out? Like, there's no one there. <laughs> Everyone's dead or gone. Well, you know? well, actually, I think you hit upon uh, their, their, the secret of their next phase four with by mentioning Thor Ragnarok, because mm. the Hulk and Thor were a great double act, and all the properties that are coming out, the TV shows included, seem to be double rolling... Act gamble on more modest crossovers like you mentioned Doctor Strange too uh, Scarlet Witch is going to be a player in that for yeah. example yeah and I think that's that's a very clever way to go about it you know the Winter Soldier and um, Falcon stuff mm. Loki's going to cross over with everybody um, I got very excited when Zemo popped up in the trailer yes I'm really and he, apparently he's going to have <laughs> the proper costume this time as well which is crazy yeah yeah so that's cool but um you know, I I'm concerned about it, but I think it's in the right hands, and obviously then it's gonna build up to working in the X Men and the Fantastic Four. So yeah, 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 and and you say like you know it's all even if it's somehow shut down tomorrow. It's been going for about twelve years. I think at this point, no matter what happens, the Marvel Universe has been a success. Yeah. For the, no, after Avengers one, I feel like everyone was saying, "Oh, now it's gonna fail. Oh, now it's gonna fail." It's done its thing. Even yeah. if its darkest year is next year, it's still earned that milestone. Yeah, and you know, Endgame, you know, I said it I said it on this show when I saw Endgame, I'm like, I'm happy enough to say goodbye to the MCU after Endgame. Mm. And I still stand by that. Like, um it's it's some it's a great playground to be in, but I think you could also do it the way you read comics. Now obviously at one point I bought like thirty, forty euro worth of comics a week um <laughs> same yeah and you know now i don't i only pick up an issue every now and then unless it's a big it's a big arc i want but you can jump back or forward and i think disney are big enough and marvel's a big enough product to be able to do that and survive you know mm. so going smaller is much better than going big because they've already went big they went pretty much as big as they can go without bringing in galactus and they will get to that so yeah that's gonna happen sooner or later yeah it will but you know losing spider-man it's it's a bit of a bummer because they were kind yeah. of like you could tell they were counting on that yeah. but you know they'll be fine it's Disney well I th I think that their secret weapon is going to be Disney Plus because the one thing they still haven't done properly is had integrated movies and TV shows yeah. a bit with Ages of S.H.I.E.L.D. but not but really. I think that'll be their ace in the hole going into the next phase I think so yeah it'll be more kind of um, a way to establish characters you know before throwing them out on the big screen yeah 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 and that's fine you know speaking of which i, I am gonna to have to get a disney plus subscription hmm. <laughs> i didn't want one but, you know <laughs> i am gonna to have to get one and it hmm. if you pay for two years apparently it's four dollars so that's pretty good yeah but the reason why is it's because of the trailer that dropped last week which is the mandalorian okay i've i've been looking forward to hearing your thoughts on it. well tell you what tell us what's in the trailer first so yeah it, it, it shows us a lot so it kind of sets up the time of when it's based um which mm -hmm. is after return of the jedi it sets up familiar but different plot elements it introduces us mm -hmm. to our character and we get to see a lot of action shots and we get a feel for the world so basically it follows a mandalorian bounty hunter uh, akin to a Boba Fett, not Boba Fett, but the Mandalorian, nevertheless. And yeah, yeah, it looks fantastic. So yeah, it's got to say, like the first time I saw it, I didn't really take to it, but then I realized I didn't take to it because there were so few unfamiliar elements, and that's what I liked about Solo, with the exception of 
Solo and Chewie in that movie. Mm. So yeah, I'm actually I'm cautiously optimistic about this. I I think it's got legs. Well, see the thing about it is it's like the problem with stuff after, and I'm gonna go back to the EU here. The problem with stuff after Jedi is they told the story. There's nowhere mm. else to go, and like that's why the best EU post Jedi stuff, with the exception of Tron, Tron is the ultimate exception. Um, mm. Everything I'm saying. But it's the exception that approves the rule, right? The only thing that's really decent from there is the Kyle Katan stuff. So I Jedi in a couple of the games. But that's because it yeah. doesn't focus on Luke. Luke is there, but he's not really there. It focuses on another character. And, yeah. You know, and that's the problem because he's already achieved the story. He's already done the hero's journey. And we're seeing this now with the prequels. No, not, sorry, not the prequels. Forgive me. The sequels. Yeah, f- forgive me for for besmirching the prequels with with. <laughs> with that. Well, you wouldn't be the first. Yeah. Um, but yeah, with the sequels, because it's like we've been here before. There's nothing new. It's all exactly the same, but worse. And then when they try to make it differently, they screw everything up. You know, with the mm. Last Jedi. So yeah, you know, we, we we'll, we'll get to the start. We'll get to the bad stuff. I don't want to touch on that yet. But my point is. That's why when you see something like this with the Mandalorian, it's like, oh, okay, cool. This is a smart way to go. Like, I loved, loved the, the fact that there was no Jedi, that there mm. was no lightsabers, that it was just, here's people in a, the mess that's left after the rebels being terrorists, basically. The Empire mm. did nothing wrong. Yeah. Don't at me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, a, after the disorder for taking down the Empire, you know? So it's like, cool, let's see what this is like. You know, and setting it in that world is great. And I think I think that was the best thing to do. I thought they were actually going to set it a little bit before. I thought they were going to set it during A New Hope. But then again, they would be like, oh, where's Boba Fett? So, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. they kind of had, they had no real choice. There was no real movement there. But, yeah, very, very, very optimistic. Um, apparently, this is not going to drop once a week. It, sorry, it's not going to drop all at once. It's going to drop once a week. So, it's more kind of like episodic, like watching an actual TV show. So that's interesting. Well, I like that though because I I like reviewing these things and mulling over and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, well, to look, be honest, I always I always tend to lose interest if they drop them all at once. Well, see, no, okay, I I'll take that point and it's a fair point. But what happens to me is I binge them and then I feel really sad ah. afterwards. Like with the boys, I'm like, yeah, I'm like, come on, <laughs> why didn't we space this out more? You know, and you're sitting there, it's like a, a fat kid that had way too much candy and you get sick everywhere. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. You know, take your time. You know, so that was my that was my big regret. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to 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 getting a wee tweak and you know it being a, a complete complete series as such. And then we got an announcement at D three that you know following on from that is the long awaited, long rumored, long wanted Obi Wan yeah. Kenobi. Uh, uh, Uma McGregor is Obi Wan Kenobi again. Now we thought yeah. this was going to be a film. And it was supposed to be a film, you know, made after Solo. Yeah. But to be honest with you, dude, I actually think the future of the Star Wars series is on TV, is in the... I'd agree with that, because for the past few years, the Rebels and Clone Wars, they've been the ones yeah, really carrying, carrying the franchise for the fans, haven't they? Yeah, like, you know, I... There hasn't been a good Star Wars movie since Revenge of the Sith. And some people hate that movie. I'm like, sorry, you're wrong. Revenge of the Sith's incredible. But even still, Revenge of the Sith, uh, Empire, A New Hope, and Jedi. Jedi, not so much. Kind of, sort of. But you have three really, really good Star Wars movies. And the rest of them are not. And the reason, well, actually, no. Rogue One is good. But well, I'd say, I'd say them's fighting words. Because my favorite's Return of the Jedi. I like Return of the Jedi as well, but the reason why, watch it again, and there are some problems with it, and the reason why I'm saying that is because it's not a complete movie, it's mm. missing so much, right? And In what is, respect? It, basically, it's missing, ha- it's, ha- it's like two movies, it's missing an entire middle piece. Now that middle piece... This is, what, uh, this is Return of a Jedi, is Return it? Return of a Jedi, yeah, and it's basically... This was expanded out in the EU books and the games. My point is, if that had been a TV show, that wouldn't be there. Think about it. Right? Oh, I see. That's yeah, what okay. I mean. Like, uh, when it gets good, it's great, but it's missing big chunks. So it's kind of like, 
and I know they're obviously doing it to wrap up the series, but because they're running to wrap up the series, they're missing mm. big chunks. And you're like, okay, well, explain to me how the Jabba plot happened. What, where was Luke training? Where? How did he? You know, how did he find it? You know, all the stuff which which obviously couldn't be done on a, on a, in a movie because it's like what mm. two hours? Yeah, but could be done over a twelve a twelve episode series. So and that that's how the books worked, you know. So you could read a book and be like, "Cool, all right." Like, um, or even the games, uh, Shadow of the Empire. That was pretty much, mm. you know, that was the story of Shadow of the Empire, right? Yeah, it was Shizor and everything. Exactly. So you know, I would say, don't bother with the movies anymore. There's no point. <laughs> just you know, there's no point. Like you can't do them, you know. And just just get. Sorry, go Can on. I make an alternate case? Yeah. I've been really enjoying. Uh, pardon me. Um, I've been really reading the Star Wars Shakespeare's by Ian Dusher. Oh, they're great. He ele- he makes the brilliant ones great, and he elevates the weaker ones. Um, and um, me and Stevie have been reading them, like doing the voices as we go, and all that kind of stuff. They're great crack. Even the Disney ones I know you don't like are great because he like puts in inside jokes and all this kind of stuff, like Chewbacca has long monologues and all this kind of stuff. That's if you're awesome. into, if you're a literature type at all, those are definitely worth checking out. Well, there you go. There's your recommendation from somebody who works in a bookshop. So, you know, you can take that. Yeah. To the bank. You can take that to the bank. Um, <laughs> it, it's one thing actually. I'm kind of just like I need more books to read, but then it's like I've I've Star Wars related. I'm like I'm not going to invest in their new canon because I already invested in their EU canon and then they wiped it. It's like no, not again. By the way, this bullshit. I'm sorry for for swearing. This bullshit with the with the car with the Caraban thing. Did you hear about this? Caraban is no longer called Caraban. It's Moraban, is it? Yeah, it's like what? What are you doing? Would you believe I was having this conversation with my brother ten minutes before we started the podcast? Yeah, it's because um, in the Clone Wars. Uh, George Lucas changed his mind and decided the planet was called Maraban. Yeah, well, it's not. And it's not. It's yeah, not. I know. It's like the way the creator. It's like on, the way, it's like the way the creator of GIF called the GIF. It's like no, it's not. You know, <laughs> it's it's, it's not, been like, overruled. Yeah, overruled. Like no, like Cor- <laughs> I'm sorry, it's called Caraban, and it's just, it just. I saw it today. I'm like, I'm really upset now. So I was upset beforehand. I'm like, it's just, it's, it's crazy. It's like, no, you can't just change stuff like that. It's, you know. Anyway. The frustrating thing is this Marban pops up in the middle of a really good story where Yoda goes up against Darth Bane and like fights you know, Emperor Palpatine on the mystical plane and all that kind of stuff. And it's a distraction in the middle of probably the best Clone War story. So. At least there's that going for it. Liam Neeson appears in it like this. Oh, it's such good. I need to go back and watch Clone Wars again. Clone Wars is great. And also that's going to be something on uh, Disney Plus as well. So Ah, there you go. Yes. It's just like, that's it. Like the future of Disney, of Star Wars. Because uh, here's the thing, right? The, Star Wars has lost the children. Mm. Children don't give a, don't give a you know what about Star Wars because yeah. it, Marvel took over, right? So know your audience readjust it to the 20 the 20 and 30 year olds who do like star wars and win them back yeah. mandalorian is going Mandal- uh, the mandalorian is going to do that the old one kenobi series is going to do that and then after rehabs then launch your your um your movies try a movie again you know but like even the well, nice of the public stuff that would be a much better mm-hmm. series than a movie really well i'm glad you went back to the mandalorian because um i think They've been obviously did the the Star Wars is trying to kind of play the Marvel game. I was watching Captain Marvel again on Blu-ray uh, the other day, and what I liked about that one was it was a relatively small story mm. in an existing working universe, and you can believe that the Hulk and this and that and the other. I believe whenever I watch a Marvel movie like an Ant Man or a Guardians of the Galaxy that these are small parts of a working universe. Yeah. I don't believe when I watch a Star Wars property. That this is a small part of a working universe. Do you know what I mean? No, I do. I, I know exactly what you mean. I, I'm, but in none of the movies are you able to. Mm. And what I mean by that is, it's like, okay, what does the you know, who do we ever encounter that's a small person, other than yeah. in episode one when you encounter the slaves, 
on Hathaway. Yeah, 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 yeah. If there was more of that, but then again, if there's more of that, people hate that because it's supposed to be a big franchise. It's what happens when you you pull so far back out to the chosen one kind of thing, and these you know you're looking at the the nobles and the knights and all that kind of stuff rather than the ordinary people. So mm. there, it's the Star Wars has never opened itself up to that because it can't. It couldn't. It's it's too busy following. It's again, it's a problem with the Skywalker thing. It's like, stop obsessing over this. This is ridiculous. You know, <laughs> if they did Dark Bane, for example, did a series on Dark Bane, you could literally have, you could you could world build, you know, a Nash you could, you could You could have, what does that feel like to be a Nash You, like, Star Wars fans know what it's like to be a Nash because he played the games. He spent mm. hours in Nash you know, read the books. And you know you could do it. You could, you could see what it's like working in the mines, and then have the character grow with the character and follow him up through, you know, three or four seasons. You know, through the through that entire series, and that would be incredible. And from that world building, there's your set point, right? Dark Bane, it came up with the rule of two, would lead into Revan, and then you could go. You know, but right now there's nothing. It's like okay, well, I know Jedi exist. I know Sith exist, but I don't really know what a Sith is because you haven't really explained that they're actually a race of they're they were a race of aliens who were not a race of aliens who are now magical evil space wizards for some reason and use these you know nothing's ever really explained. So the difference between the Marvel universe and the Star Wars universe is the Marvel universe lays down and is lays down a very very strong continuity. The Star Wars continuity is very very strong despite the movies and the Star Wars continuity is strong because of all the books and games and what well, how many years were between Jedi and Phantom Menace 30, 30, um, 20 years well, 30 I'd years? say it was 1999 was Phantom Menace what, what was um, Jedi 83, 83 84 like 83. a decent 15 16 years at least yeah 15 16 years right so over that time there was no Star Wars the only Star mm. Wars were books and games that's where your continuity is. Disney doesn't understand yeah. that. Lucas didn't even understand that. But he kind of did enough to let people play in the sandbox. And that was the great thing about Lucas. He was like, look, I don't care. Here's a sandbox. Go play in it. You know? But now we're sitting here and Disney are like, oh, yeah. And it's just, it's, it feels... When I watch a Disney Star Wars product, it looks like Star Wars. It sounds like Star Wars. It, but it isn't Star Wars. You know what I mean? It it, it feels synthetic. Yeah, and it's like uh, again to go kind of. I think Red Letter Media said it's like when you watch the Star Wars episode seven or eight. There's like a sheen over it. It feels almost too polished. Like even when you're watching like the making of, it feels more like you're watching something for a political campaign or a brand than for an organic story that someone has a vision about or cares about you know yeah but it, like yeah it, it more feels like something that something that like it feels like a movie if that mm. makes sense you know yeah like you're watching you're like okay this is a movie <laughs> there's nothing to be invested in because you know obviously none of it's real but you're like okay can you not just have a character like uh, you know Ray, to, not to get too much into it, but like, what's Ray's character? He doesn't have one. Finn, he had a character and then threw it away by the force of the movie. You know, it's like mm. Poe had a character and it's gone. You know, they've all reached their, their, their points here super rarely, so it's like, okay, these don't feel like real people. And e even if your world doesn't feel real, your character should feel real. Like, look at The Boys. The Boys was made on a, on a not comparatively small budget, but everyone in that mm. in, everyone in that universe feels real. Like, it feels like a real universe. And that world is ridiculous. In the Marvel Universe, it's ridiculous, but still feel you still care about all the characters there. You know? Oh, yeah. It's character-led, the Marvel Universe. Exactly. And that's, that's like, you can, like, you know, you can have a talking tree... And everybody cares about the talking tree who only says <laughs> three things. But he has more of a character than anyone in the, the Disney Star Wars products. You know? Like, oh yeah, he's grown uh, two lifetimes in the space of three or four movies. But it, like even think about it, like who the strongest character in the Disney Star Wars was Darth Vader. Mm. 
And that's because it's Darth Vader. And even still, the way he was used in Rogue One, he was cracking jokes, you know? And it's like, Vader wouldn't do that. <laughs> you know? just... No, I, I try and imagine Hayden Christensen saying it. And yeah. actually, it does sound very prequely George Lucasian dialogue, now that I think about it. Fair, fair. But, you know, it's, if you read, like, you read the Vader comics, he's a diff, he's, you know, the ultimate badass. And it's like, mm. you know, the problem is, and I think this has finally been addressed, not in the movie, which we will get to now in a few minutes, but it's finally been addressed, particularly with these Disney Plus shows. It's like, right, we've lost here. Let's mm. kind of get this back, or else there will be no Star Wars, and we wasted four four billion dollars. Uh, yeah. And I think, like, yeah, the Mandalorian is going to be amazing because it already is. Uh, it's actually very similar to what happened with ba- the new Battlefront game, Battlefront Two. Battlefront Two when it came out was terrible, absolutely atrocious. You play it now, like you play it like now on the twenty ninth of August two thousand and nineteen. It feels like playing the old Battlefront game, Battlefront Two from two thousand and five. It's fantastic. So did they mod it or like what no, did they, they do? Mod it. They just fixed it. They <laughs> they just put everything that you were expecting in it, and you're playing it, and you're like, "This is fantastic." Basically, everything that you think should be in it is in it. You know, they just that was yeah, there yeah, initially, yeah. and the only reason why it's there is because they're like, "Oh crap, we're in a lot of trouble. Let's code really quickly." So, <laughs> you know, but like, and I remember when I put the disc in, there was like a you know a 25 gig patch or something it's like oh <laughs> there's a lot here you know but um yeah and okay so that's the well clip. actually before we get into the trailer yeah. could i actually because you mentioned darth vader could i mention two star wars book recommendations of course go for it uh i've just recently finished uh bloodline by claudia gray which is the story of princess leia in the intervening years between the return of the Jedi and uh, the Force Awakens. And it's all about the uh, political climate there. There's a sort of clash of ideas between whether they should return to the Empire or go more Republic. And everyone is sort of... There's a whole generation of people who grew up after the Empire Wars who don't really know what it is. And it's the best Star Wars book I've ever read. It goes a huge way to sort of explaining the universe of episode 7 and 8 that it doesn't really do and it treats Princess Leia with loads of respect as a character I enjoyed it immensely and actually you learn a lot about Darth Vader by proxy because we never had a chance for her to react to that realisation in Jedi as you sort of alluded to earlier I have heard that's a pretty decent book um, for that reason because she never really she never really got over the fact that her dad was mm. the biggest villain in her life <laughs> you know she exactly really, you know. yeah yeah no because she makes a point of in her in her monologue of pointing out that darth vader stood next to her while Alderaan blew up and all this kind of stuff yeah and, and she, she has to deal with the sort of inherited legacy of being bail organa's daughter and a symbol of the empire's defeat with the shadow of darth vader being in the background and sort of steering the ship towards a republic but obviously the first order is creeping in so yeah it's a really good well thought out political thriller and it does a lot to justify that world that they haven't really set up properly in the disney films like you see that's that's something that is very interesting because the i know leia's arc in the old eu and some of it's ridiculous but uh Jason and Jekka Solo. That's something I wish we had. You know, and I like I like I like yeah. I like Leia's trajectory in the EU more than in the Disney one, but that seems like a pretty good read. I'll give that one a go. What's your second recommendation? The um, I've just started the third in the new Thrawn trilogy. I know you're up on your Timothy Zahn stuff, but I just wanted to mention it because the second of the new Thrawn books is very specifically about the relationship between Thrawn and Anakin Skywalker slash Darth Vader. So new and it keeps then. So new timeline, but it happens prior to A New Hope. Yeah, because so that's when like, he, yeah. Yeah, he's introduced during the Clone Wars. No, sorry. Yeah, no, and no, basically... Sorry. Not during the Clone Wars. So you go on. He's introduced during Rebels, sorry. Yeah, it's yeah. The, so it's the Rebels Thrawn. But yeah. yeah, it keeps slipping back and forth between Anakin Skywalker and Thrawn during the Clone Wars. 
on a mission with Padme to investigate something for the Republic. And in the present, both Darth Vader and Thrawn going on a mission together and their egos are clashing over who is the superior figure, who is more threatening, who means more to the Emperor, at the same time that they are hiding the fact that they went on this different mission in the past. So it's a really good sort of mental chess game between the two and a bit like the Darth Vader comics. If you want something about Darth Vader out of the context of fighting Luke Skywalker and all that kind of stuff, that's a very good read in that way. It definitely helps bridge the gap between Anakin Skywalker and Darth Vader in a way that I think a lot of material doesn't quite manage. And this goes back to my point. Disney, make those. (laughs) (laughs) Either one of those are better than anything we got. Yeah, like like Thrawn in the Rebels TV show is Lars Mikkelsen from the third series of Sherlock. Just paint him blue. And he did good. it for Will Smith. And you're That's a go. great villain right there. You know, I, like Disney, by playing it so safe with the movies, they made a bland soup. And nobody likes yeah, bland yeah, soup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and it's just like... And then they made an offensive bland soup that, and then insulted <laughs> their entire fan base. And it's like, well... You didn't help yourself there. You just made it far worse. <laughs> yeah, it's, I suppose with the Marvel properties, when Iron Man and like Captain America came out, people were just happy to see them, you know? Uh, they kind of went in with sort of people with their backs up before The Force Awakens even went out. Like, I think, I think maybe they didn't realize what quite property they were buying up, you know? Like, the thing about it is, it's... <laughs> What annoyed me about a Force the Force Awakens, and I remember the day the Force Awakens came out, I I vowed to not see it, and I only saw <laughs> no, and I only saw it because my dad was like, "You're going to see it." I'm like, "Okay." Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but I remember I just got off set on Game of Thrones, and I was like, "Okay, let's see." I remember sitting in Starbucks in Belfast, just you know, scrolling through Facebook and or scrolling through the you know, I, I saw the synopsis of it, and I read something mm. like, "Oh Christ, it's terrible," and it is. You know, it's it's a very visually nice movie, mm. um, but it's terrible. It's a terrible, terrible film. And the reason why is, objectively, right, it's a good movie. It's about 70. 70 out of 100, right? However, in the context of a Star Wars movie, what they gave up to tell that story was not worth it. They gave, Are you talking about the original canon? I'm t- well, look, <laughs> DU wasn't amazing, right? <laughs> Let me clear that up. It got to a point near the end where it was a mess. There was stuff in it mm. that was a complete mess. However, they didn't have to get rid of all of it. If they had it just yeah. made, and they proved it by bring, bringing back Tron. If they had it just made the Tron trilogy, the original Tron trilogy, that would have been it. They could have de- like all the actors were alive. They could have de-aged all of those actors and told those stories. Mm. Yeah, you know. Um, or they could have jumped forward to where the canon was, where Luke is as old as Mark Hamill is now, and just tell the story of the just tell the, the Jason and and Jenka Solo uh, story. Yeah, so, you know. That... Or or you skip all that and tell a story in the relative time scale yeah. of the actor's age. Exactly, and you just know... reference that stuff exactly. that happened in the books exactly. to keep people happy. And the thing about it is, you know, that, I know people are saying, oh, that's fan service. It's like, yeah, but the thing about it is you have your pre-built universe there that you can reference and then that you can build out on your Disney streaming service, on your whatever, or just release a couple of games. You know, like, yeah, that was the fun of it. Now, whatever Disney Star Wars release, you know, and I'm not I'm not including stuff that hasn't been released yet. I'm just including now. Yeah, yeah. Stand. What can you do? That's why the games suck so badly. Because it's like, okay, we haven't got anywhere to play in. There's no, there's nothing, there's nowhere for this to go. So it keeps going over uh, the the original Lucas films. You know, it, it's starting to go into the prequels now. And it just shows you how desperate they are. They're actually like heavily leaning on the prequels going, hey, hey, remember the prequels? Uh, you know. Oh god, well I mean you're kind of, I mean I love the prequels so but you're kind I, of up a creek when you're leaning on them you know? That's what I mean, you know like when the, when the EU was there people were like oh you know, the prequels are a joke and now it's like oh the prequels are great, it's like how did you mess this up so badly? <laughs> <laughs> it's just crazy it's just like they, they just took they took everything and just and I think you're right Kane. they just fundamentally misunderstood 
what they had. And he did, like Disney don't have, well, they do, but they don't put him in power. They don't have a Kevin mm. Feige. No. Like they, Dave Fellini, is there Kevin Feige that they need to just go here? Please yeah. just, please fix this. And he would fix it because Dave Fellini for exactly because like Clone Wars, Rebels, and I'm halfway through Resistance, mm. and they're all great, and yeah. they all overlap, and they all their own little continuity in and of themselves, yeah. and that's across decades, and somehow it's great yeah. and it all makes sense because the, Fellini actually is a Star Wars fan and understands the, the series. Mm. Yeah, know, yeah, pa- yeah, Kathleen Kennedy doesn't understand mm. how to tie her shoes in the morning. You know, I I did see. Was it you that put up that post about the Catherine Kennedy saying yeah. no Star Wars women, and it's like SpongeBob falling down all the walls <laughs> with all the pictures yeah. of Ahsoka and all that kind of stuff? But you know, I, I look. I, this we're not. Don't get us wrong. We're not one of those people going. Oh, the women are bad. It's like no. The one great thing, like the one great thing about, I've talked with your girlfriend about Star Wars, and she's like a bigger Star Wars fan than me, which is insane. You know, a lot of my friends are massive Star Wars fans. Because they're able to relate to the female characters that are there. It's like oh, she lives and breathes it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, she knows her stuff. But that's what I mean, you know. It's like in okay in the main movies, fair. I'll give you that. But mm. the movies only made up a part of Star Wars. Like, yeah. The rest of the world was you know was what people loved. The fact they could you know like I remember you know you go to cons and you still see people walking around dressed as Revan. Yeah. You know, it's like that just shows it. You know, you dressed up as Tron before. Was, that, was this before or after Tron was on TV? The, the this was after. It was would have been uh, last August. Fair, okay, but you know what I mean. Still, it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's what I mean. Like you know, you, there's there's such this big big world that they've given away, and I don't know how they're going to bridge that gap. I don't know how they're going to be able to fix that. But you know. Judging by what we've seen with the trailers and getting to, you know, this show is literally just going to be Star Wars, guys. I'm sorry, we're <laughs> we're 36 minutes in and we've all we've done is talk about Star Wars, really. But it's to be honest, we kind of knew that going in. If you're being honest, uh, would you mind uh, for anyone who has been under a rock and hasn't seen it, would you mind taking us through what's in this brand new trailer? Yeah. Okay. So D23 was last week, and we got we got a trailer like a little bit before, and then we got like a trail like. We got two trailers. So we got one trailer back in three months ago. And that was the 90-minute kind of thing with Ray jumping over the yeah, yeah, yeah. the TIE fighter and stuff, right? Then yeah, we yeah. got another trailer at D23, which started off a minute of Star Wars footage and, like, all, like Saga. So from... It basically goes from, like, episode four to episode six, then jumps back to episode one and goes all the way to episode three, and then you have yeah, the yeah. footage. Then there was another trailer that combined everything together. And it's actually a much better trailer. But the important thing about this is... There's, I watched a breakdown of it. Do you know in the percentage how much new footage... Like from the movie that's coming out in December there is? In the percentage number? Uh, we're going to say 50%? 13%. 13 you joking? I'm deadly serious. 13%. <laughs> 13%, that's it. Over half is footage from movies made, at this point, 20 years ago. Mm. Or 10 years. Uh, yeah, it was 20 years ago. 15, 20 years ago. And then, you know, even further back, you know, down to the 70s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> then there's, like, loads of cuts to black. And, yeah, and there's, like, 20 seconds of new footage. This but like, I mean, what what do you think that's trying to communicate? It's, I, I know they've recently retroactively called the nine films the Skywalker saga. Yeah. So do you think they're trying to really ram it home that these three new movies are the concluding part of that? Yeah. As you, opposed well, to what they were originally planning, which was 12 episodes. Well, they are and they aren't. You know, I think mm. they know that they're almost done. They know that if they... Like, if this movie flops which it probably will that is the end of Star Wars movies for about 10 years because okay that's I, to be honest I would be even with all the bad press unless they film the movie twice I would be amazed if this actually flops I think Star Wars will always bring in at least a tiny bit of profit Solo Solo lost money 
Oh yeah, but that's because they filmed the whole thing twice. Solo would have to like break Infinity War levels to just make a, I mean, make a profit after that. But the thing about it is, you know, it it still sets that precedent. The the mm, last Jedi true. did so much damage to everybody that's like okay. And I look, I'll go on record. I didn't hate the last Jedi. I I actually respect, no no I, res- I love it, but I don't love it. I I respect it because it it wasn't a remake of yeah, the movie yeah, yeah. seen before. It wasn't good. But it wasn't bad either. It was just, you know, meh. You know? It was like, mm. this wasn't worth sacrificing the Tron trilogy for. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, That's fair. But anyway, this has to perform. And I don't think it will. Like, the big thing about it was, you know, obviously, some visuals look great. Like, it looks like it's going to be visually amazing. Um, there's well, it's really... J.J. Abrams. That's what he does. Exactly. There's some great, there's some great bits in it. Um, you know, Will I go into the leaks? Because I have a pretty full on leak. On I I haven't heard the leaks. Okay. So I mean, let's let's just say take them with a pinch of salt. Yeah. What have you heard? Yeah. So you know, check out Nerd Roddick and Doom Clock on this as well. Um, but basically, what I've heard is that it will involve time travel at some point. Red letter media again, kind yeah. of thought that might be a thing. thing. I think like. <laughs> Depending on what's going on, so there's the, there's the high there's the high belief here that Ray is Shmi Skywalker. Shmi right? Skywalker. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Or that's some, new. Or there's some kind of virgin birth or something, right? And basically, okay. that's he time travels and goes back and starts the whole thing, All right? So that's. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So she's like the beginning and the end, right? Which, to be right. fair, if they do that, I wouldn't be. I actually wouldn't have a problem with that. It would make that. That would, would loop them together, actually. Yeah, it would make sense. It's like, okay, it's stupid, but it's not that stupid. Another one is, you know, Ray going to the dark side. Yeah. She's a clone of Vader. I've heard a lot of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not stupid. Kind of stupid. But makes sense, kind of. <laughs> you know? Um, yeah. Another one is that, you know, there is a clone of... Like, she was cloned anyway from Vader, and she's not mm. the dark side, but she's fighting herself. Like, she's fighting her clone. Again, right. stupid. It would, that would explain the big hole of mirrors in episode eight. Exactly, and also the weird looking face that she has. Yeah. You know, in this, like, she looks very CGI ish in that clip. Oh, um, I thought that was because she was possessed by Palpatine or something. Well, okay, there's. There, I'm, I'm going to get to that in a second. Oh, sorry, sorry. So, yeah, see, so stupid. But not that stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I think that... You know, I'm just going to... Actually, that's the title of this episode. Stupid, but not that stupid. <laughs> um, the rise of... Eh, all right, I guess. Yeah, it's okay. Um, yeah, so another one is... Matt Smith is possessed by... Uh, Palpatine. I've heard that for a while. All the information about him has dropped Drop. off the face of the earth. Yeah, but the big belief now is he's young Palpatine... Or he's possessed by him in some way. That would be incredibly <sighs> ironic okay. because he was it's supposed to be the Ray Fiennes character in Bruges, the young Ray Fiennes that got cut, and he was supposed to be the baddie in Terminator something or other, Genesis. He was. He was. And also more or less got left on the cutting room floor. No, he was. He was the baddie. He was like he was the guy who like sabot who killed John Connor, remember? Well he was yeah, but like still he was kind of being set up for a bigger role a bigger part later on that never happened like fair, fair. but like out of all those things that we said mm. they're all really unnecessary you know like if if Ray is a clone of Vader kind of creepy yeah <laughs> if she's Va- if she's like the progenitor of the Skywalker family also kind of creepy because of then it makes well i suppose that kind of ties into the, the history of incest or borderline incest with with the skywalkers um i was gonna say you're getting cl- close to what is it called raylo kyrie yeah what's, what's their shipping name uh, raylo or whatever but to be fair like and then there's another one where you know i i will say now anyone who thinks that ray is turning to the dark side no way it's a je- the what will probably happen is that's a vision, and this yeah, is, there's they've done visions in both of her movies, haven't yeah. they? And this is nothing 
absolutely nothing but a J.J. Abrams mystery box thing. Yeah. And if it's a case where that's it, and she beats, she beats um, Kylo, and she goes off into the sunset, and nothing happens. That would be the worst movie ever. Well, let's let's entertain the either Smee Skywalker or reincarnation of Darth Vader thing because yeah. if either of those were true, then you've got your time travel loop thing, and also it means that thematically she is trying to redeem both Luke Skywalker and mm-hmm. Kylo Ren, yeah. despite being either Vader or Vader's father, and that does have a weird. What's that thing George Lucas always said? It it's like poetry, it's the, it's it rhymes, the that kind of thing going for and it. To be fair, you know what? If that if that happens, as stupid as that is, that is something that mm. has been established in the in the universe as being a thing that can happen. Yeah, yeah. Right. And uh Sh- and Shmi was in the did commune with the force yeah, when she, she died because she popped up in Clone Wars, didn't she? She did, yeah. And obviously she was extremely powerful to be able to literally give birth to the chosen one as well. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. That would take some power, wouldn't it? Yeah, so it's like, right. I, that is something that I can get on board with. Because mm. it's, it's the only real play they have. Like They have mm. to do something really kind of risky to make it worthwhile. Because if it is just a case of, well, she beat Kylo again. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then it ends, and it was like, what? What was, what was this? And, no. and don't and don't forget, you've got the Knights of Ren as well. They've been teasing them for ages, so if they're just storm lightsabers, people are going to be upset. Like, yeah, it it they've set themselves up to fail so badly, and it's just like, right, just mm. do something really crazy to make this yeah. work. Like, they have to do something big to pay off because if there's no payoff, it's like, okay, this was for no. It's like the whole basically. This is the, the way Disney should look at this. And they are not looking at it like this. This should be mm. the Infinity War. Sorry, the end game of the Star Wars saga, right? Yeah. It doesn't feel like that. It doesn't feel like it at all. There's no stakes. No. There are but again, no stakes. But again, to go back to the Darth Vader thing, if it was, if she was some sort of Darth Vader thing, that would tie in both Rogue One and yes. Solo because yes. you've got Lando coming back and Darth Vader was in Rogue One. Exactly. Yeah. And they can say retroactively that was the plan the whole time. Yeah, and you know what? And that would be people are going. People would hate that, honestly. Yeah, they would freak out, but they would hate a hell of a lot more mm. if it was just, you know, what I heard initially was nothing. Where Ray, yeah, the whole um, the whole Ray thing is for her to go get a, a communicator from the Death Star to send out a message of hope and restart the rebellion. Uh, okay. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard, and I really hope. And you know what? If that is the case, Star Wars deserves to die. And I, <laughs> I say this as someone who was literally surrounded by Star Wars toys, <laughs> because I'm like, that is the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life, and it's such a massive. Well, to return to the what we were saying about the Marvel Universe earlier, you know, even if this is the last Star Wars movie, it's too big to be a failure it'll still be this big lasting legacy thing yeah but the thing about it is you know then you have to do what we've talked about on this show where luke wakes up in a bad dream or marriage oh i see okay because you know where do you go from there you're like well this was an absolute abject complete failure let's just you know (laughs) pretend like it never (laughs) happened you know, because that's all you. That's all yeah, you can do. Yeah, yeah. Like at least, if, at least if you do the reincarnation thing or you do the time travel thing, there is that loop, and it explains why you kept looping because it's like it was never broken. It's always designed to loop. It's yeah. it's what's called a recursion loop in, in CS. Um, hmm. so that would be cool. It's like, well, okay, this makes perfect sense. But well, it doesn't, but it kind of does. Where of course it's a loop. It's always going to go. It's never going to end, no matter what, because you know it's it's the way it's been set up. So I yeah. hope that happens. That would be great. But one thing, we, one thing I will, I will put any money on that vision or that thing of Ray with the with the lightsaber. I was impressed we made it this far and without mentioning her holding a Darth Maul saber. Yeah, well, if, an impractical Darth Maul saber. Like, come on. Yeah. And I, I would defend the lightsaber whip, but the way that works is like, hey, that's gonna cut you in half. Like that's. Mm. And not, you know, it's just the way it opens. It doesn't seem practical. 
I know, let's say, but no, guys, go with me. <laughs> <It's so laughs> annoying. It doesn't seem practical, you know, like, it's like, okay, you don't really have much control over it, but anyway. So, I don't have a problem with it as such, other than the fact that it is a vision, it's a dream, it's a mystery box mm. thing, and let's, look, truth be told, there's no way JJ would give away the ending to his movie in a trailer. No. He can't, because the man can't write endings. He can write Spider-Man comics. Fair. Um, <laughs> but he just, you know, in movies, like, think about it, or movies and TV shows, anything he's written, it's like, it, the ending is pretty poor. But, yeah. it's, I'm going, I'm going to be cautiously optimistic. But, you know, it's it's worth pointing out that the writers of this one, as opposed to episode seven, are J.J. Abrams and um, oh, the guy who wrote uh, Dawn of Justice and Justice League. Oh, yeah, Goyer. Like, like, yeah. don't get me wrong. I know that like a script can be good and then you can go through the process and then it turns out not good at the end. But still, it's not it's not the biggest no. vote of confidence, isn't it? It's not like and that's why it's like this is the gamble, you know, it, they there is absolutely zero hype for this movie and it's crazy to think that compared to the hype that was you know when the force awakens came out yeah but, yeah, yeah. But even I, solo even so despite yeah. not breaking it had a certain hype about it in that people went to see would he be a good han solo and it had Correct. uh your man from uh parks and rec donald glover as um not parks and rec what was the show community as um, Lando Calrissian and people want to see what the fuss was about. I don't even think episode nine has that much. Uh, episode nine has like almost negative, negative uh, mm. hype, you know, and it's like, okay, how to bring it back, do something crazy, you know, and if, mm. if, if they just, uh, you, Disney cannot afford to play safe on this because they'll kill their franchise. Like the franchise is already in yeah. life sport as it is. And yeah. I think it, it like it will come back and be saved by its TV shows because those TV shows are going to be awesome. No matter how bad this is, those TV shows will still be awesome, right? And, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. They can still pull it back, but this is what I'm saying to you. Like on the big screen, it's done for about five to ten years. Yes, I, I would say nearly ten years, but you're probably right. You know, five years is a long time on the internet. So, well, I mean, you mentioned the cycle, like Star Wars by some weird verisimilitude tends to go for a trilogy and then take a little 15 year snooze and then come back and people yeah. love it again and then they aren't happy with it and then it goes for a snooze again like the prequels are in that as well but see the, th- the thing about the prequels is I would argue that the, the legacy of the prequels is better than the movies because remember right when episode 1 came out after episode 1 that's when we got Kultor right Yes, yes. And that's because of everything that the prequel set up. They set up new worlds, new planets, and also a new toy box to play with. And you had some great novels and all that kind of stuff. It's like, mm. you know, just start doing that again. Or start retroactively bringing, recanonizing stuff. Or, you know, Disney shot, Disney shot themselves in the foot by getting rid of all of it. And now they're paying for it. But, um, yeah, it's it's one of those things, man, you know. But... Oh my god, we have we have three minutes left on the show. We literally spent the entire show talking about Star Wars. <laughs> but look, you know, there's there's people ranting and raving more than us, and I've I've watched many of them and stuff like that. But I don't know. I'm just I, I'm just trying to say positive about it, Keen. But before we wrap up, is there anything you want to say? Uh. I've, well, I've already made my book recommendations. I suppose while we're on the way out, Marvel also very quickly announced a She-Hulk, a Moon Knight, and a uh, Miss Marvel TV show. Hmm. Is that something you're interested in at all? Or I'm not a fan of Miss Marvel. I think she's a very lame no? character. Um, She-Hulk, also kind of a lame character, but hmm? mm, you know they're both interesting and they both could be very good yeah. and both probably will be very good, but... You know, I've read both of them and they never really did anything for me. Moon Knight mm. is awesome. Uh, yes. Moon Knight is fantastic. That's a cool show. It's um, mm. There was, you know, there was talk of different characters going to play it. But um, look, I haven't seen any of these. We, none of us have seen any of these uh, Disney Plus shows yet. So there's nothing to really No, gain that is worth that. pointing out. Yes, you before know, everyone, yeah, including us, trips over our feet getting excited. Exactly. There's nothing really to, to gauge these for. So while I wasn't a fan of Miss Marvel in the comic book, 
This is the Kamala Khan yes. Marvel now. Yes. Uh, wasn't a fan of She-Hulk in the comics or the cartoons uh, from you know, the animated universe. But, mm. you know, there's no reason to say that both of those shows could be, couldn't be amazing. They probably will be, or they'll be interesting in some way. But I would say, look, if you're a fan, great. Um, but I hope they're better than the comics. <laughs> to dovetail this back to Star Wars, actually, uh, I used to love the She-Hulk comics because they really? broke the fourth wall quite a lot. Yeah, oh, there's. I remember there was one comic where She-Hulk's uh, lawyers were handling the case of uh, what's the name of the duck in the Marvel universe? Howard the Duck. Howard the Duck. Howard the Duck was suing George Lucas for his film underperforming. <laughs> And they handled the case, like, and they had his likeness and everything. That's so fantastic. if they bring that irreverence to the TV show, yes, please more of that. Well, you know, that that's great. And that's why I'm saying, you know, I think the, the, the big fear of a lot of people is that the Marvel seem to be pulling from modern day comics and mm. modern day Marvel comics are not good. Like <laughs> really not good. Like some of like the, the Spider-Man books are pretty decent, but um, you know, I I get the concern, and I share it with a lot of people. But I'm mm. like, hey, you know, let's see, let's just see what happens. You know, if it's if if it's a train wreck, it's a train wreck. If it's good, well, then it's good. So cautiously. And optimistic. if it's and if it's a train wreck, we've still got the old Simpsons on there. That's true. You know, like look, Disney Plus is something I'm going to have to get anyway yes. because it has everything. Um, mm. it's just it just ha- has everything. You know, it's it's fantastic. So yeah. Um, totally worth four dollars a month anyway, right? <laughs> but uh, guys, that's gonna do it for this edition of Nerd to No Basis. Holy cow, Kane! I can't believe that just flies in. It's unreal. Um, yeah, well, get you talking about Star Wars. You know, the hours are gonna disappear. Oh uh, yeah, that's that was a mistake. Damn it, Disney. <laughs> um, yeah, guys, we'll be back next week. Obviously, uh, every Saturday on Phoenix Two Point Five FM, and we do we do try to stream every Thursday at around 9 o'clock so keep an eye on our Twitter for the announcement Nerds No Media everywhere nerdtonomedia.com Nerds No Media on Twitter you can contact us nerdtonomedia at gmail.com or Nerds No Media on Facebook so for Bryn who isn't here this week for my co-host Keen I've been Dara Connor this is Nerds No Basis Nerds No Basis